My hope is that this video will serve as your guide as to why silver prices will rise in 2023. Let's explore. <laughs> The markets are fickle. One thing I am able to make a prediction of very confidently, as I mentioned in a prior video, is that silver prices will be volatile in the coming year. Nonetheless, I think overall, we are going to see them rise. And we're gonna see them rise for five reasons. I'm gonna be referencing an article here, actually from mining.com. And in a rare instance, I'm gonna actually post, post a link to this article as it goes into greater detail. But nonetheless, we know that there's a lot of bullish factors for silver right now uh, on multiple different fronts. And I'm going to capture all of them in this video and talk about why I think silver is going to climb up. As to how much, well, we'll get to that in another video. But I think it's, a, I think it's, a, it's not necessarily uh, unreasonable to think that silver uh, should rise this coming year. The first thing is geopolitics. And around geopolitics, we also have energy that plays a role as well, too. But look at where we uh, came from in 2022. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, back in February, well, we saw a dramatic rise in silver above the $26 an ounce mark. Now, that was pretty much a flash in the pan, but any kind of increased tensions uh, could certainly cause silver to rise in that area alone again, especially now that there's more talk of the threat of nuclear war um, and uh, whether it be between uh, Western Europe or Ukraine and Russia. But nonetheless, the fact that it's being talked about and uh, the threat of it is increasing is a pretty scary notion. But we also have what's going on in China as well with Taiwan. There's increased tensions there, saber rattling of sorts, and any kind of increase in hostilities could definitely lead to the same type of thing where we silver, see silver spike up in the short term or maybe even for longer, considering that likely that uh, the invasion of Taiwan will most likely not mean that things are just going to pause in Ukraine. Uh, so those are factors that we must take into account, among other unforeseen geopolitical uh, factors that come into play. We are seeing more and more nations trying to uh, divorce themselves and decouple themselves from the dependence on the dollar. And that is something that we've seen time and time again, chipping away at the dollar's dominance around the world. And that is being played in part with energy. And we know with uh, a lot of the sanctions uh, that is going on now with Russia and heating oil and diesel and the threats of the supplies dwindling in those areas, um, even just the talk of the threat of them, even if they get restocked, uh, that could send silver prices higher, at least momentarily. And so that is the one thing to consider here is those geo uh, geopolitical factors that are, that are coming into play. Uh, the next thing is the what we're seeing in the, in, with a bubble in stocks. There is a overinflated stock market. And a lot of the money that's going into the stock market is, is really left over from four rounds of quantitative easing. Um, and, and that has been going on for quite some time, but this is not the only time. A lot of this is an artificial bubble, I believe. But the last time we saw this much of the stock market being so overvalued was back during the dot-com bubble, which is in a sense a reactionary bubble to the dot-com boom uh, which was fairly um, organic in nature, whereas this is manufactured mainly by the Fed. A lot, of, a lot of that money being pumped in from four rounds of quantitative easing that we've seen. We've not seen this much of a decline in the stock market, which is still fairly high, since the, uh, the Great Recession uh, was happened there. But of course, we're not nearly down as far uh, below the historic trend line uh, in the markets that we were then. And, and those numbers are, are rising, by the way. They keep expanding and due to the uh, derivatives markets and, and all that is associated and tied with that. 
But there is this uh, indicator model named after Warren Buffett. And this buffer indicator model is saying that um, mostly where the markets are now is just under this one standard deviation of being overvalued. So it's considered fairly valued now, but still above the, that trend line. But uh, we are seeing kind of a sawtooth pattern with the market and it's continuing to fall. And maybe many people feel that it's because of other factors I'm going to mention that the stock market could fall or maybe even crash. Um, and if that happens, all bets are off the table in terms of silver. And uh, keep in mind that every time gold rises, silver tends to rise even more at a more dramatic rate. On the opposite of that spectrum, whenever gold falls, silver tends to fall even more. But it could be based off of this and other factors that it may not happen as much. But again, a lot of it depends on the economy, it depends on supply chain issues, and it also depends on government policy. And we're gonna talk about that here momentarily. But that is kind of where we are at as we head into the next reason why uh, silver will rise in 2023. Many people are talking about the 2023 being the year of the Fed pivot, where they turn from hawkish to dovish. And that's exactly what a pivot is, where they will literally start uh, another round of quantitative easing, quantitative easing round five, 5.0. And uh, many people feel they may actually lower rates in the coming year to try to stave off um, sort of this, this um, hyperinflationary state or realizing that whatever they are doing is not having the effect that uh, many people have, had hoped. And that is in relation to inflation and also uh, the jobs numbers, the housing market, all of it. You know, every time they raise rates and they just got done raising rates again, uh, many people feel they want to kind of get that 5% target or what have you will come fairly quickly as the Federal Reserve has pretty much made it known that they're going to continue uh, with their what they refer to as a hawkish stance. But actually, they said have been more aggressive much earlier on. But that's a whole another scenario and point. But when you think about that kind of movement um, and and suppressing uh, the velocity of money um, and and the, the economy and employment, and it's going to be it's going to hurt inflation. Uh, the inflation rate is may not go down dramatically because a lot of what they have been putting into place now, they say. Um, is having somewhat of an effect, but uh, if by any measure, especially considering how we are now well into high inflation from last year at this time, it's uh, in, anytime you see the number go down month uh, over year over year, it's really just a decrease in the increase, um, but it's still growing. You measure it month over month, and we are still seeing higher inflation. 0.1%. That's really the true measure to see it go down from one month to the next. But even as such, when you look at it year over year, we're stacked upon another 7% from 7% a year ago. So that's 14% inflation. And that's why the Fed is being extra cautious about saying that inflation is not under control yet. They're trying to cover themselves. But sooner or later, those tools are going to run out. Um, and barring any kind of 1% uh, rate hike, uh, that would pretty much kill the economy, and they certainly don't want that. They are walking a very fine line, a razor's edge, if you will. And But nonetheless, that's why they could pivot, which will be very good for gold and especially silver, I feel. And that could send it up. And, and that brings us to the fourth reason, and that is coupled sort of, in a sense, tied in with the pivot, and that is inflation. It is continuing to rise. Um and even if it cuts in half right now to 3.5% next quarter, that's 3.5% on top of 7 plus percent that we saw the previous time. Keep in mind, the Fed has a target. They have a target where, they, where everything is considered, quote, normal at 2%. In fact, there was a time when they would have been very happy with 2.5% before this all really started. I remember reading an article about that at the time where, and where the Fed governors and Jerome Powell were saying, hey, 2.5% is fine. To me, none of it is good. 
Inflation is inflation, even if it's just two or even 1%. Uh, obviously, 1% inflation means lower economic activity as well. And that's kind of what they're looking to try to do. That's what we have seen in China over the past year because of their draconian lockdowns and the like. Uh, economic activity has been stifled. But that is now starting to turn around now in China because of protests and the like. And we are starting to see their economy essentially being opened up by and large by the people. At least that's the latest word. Who knows how much of that will be true in 2023? We'll find out. But that leaves us to the fifth reason, which I think is the biggest reason why silver is going to rise in 2023. Increased demand on all fronts. Now, I think that demand can be broken down in a couple of different areas. Uh, for sure. Demand can be broken down into industrial demand, which can be broken down by photovoltaics or solar. And it can also be uh, broken down into 5G technology, which is going to continue to grow. Those, Both of those things will have some sort of government influence in them. Uh, so in a sense, they're kind of economy proof because you want connectivity and the like. Automotive is definitely very much based on the economy. So uh, that's a factor that very well could suffer, that could stave off the, uh, the rise of silver, at least to some degree. But uh, likely, 5G and solar will cover those, um, and will make up for any loss in, in, uh, in silver's demand in automotive. Then you have brazing and soldering, which is something that certainly is uh, remarkable to think about. They use a lot of silver. And all these forecasts are up, 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 and up over the next, uh, you know, six, seven, eight years. And then the electronics is another one. Obviously, it seems like in many ways, some of the electronics devices that we see out there, they've not really gone up much in price. They've been, to some extent, inflation-proof. Uh, but uh, I'm, it's only a matter of time before there's less and less demand for that stuff as the economy wanes. But I don't think it'd be enough to... Um, uh, to stave off the growing demand for silver in there. So it's, it's a critical metal. And in these cases, global demand for silver um, by most measures, by metals focus at Silver Institute will be up. And it will be up uh, in a sense, really no matter what the economy does, um, because governments will take all this quantitative easing and all this other money and go ahead and use it for their uh, green initiatives. Uh, the Green New Deal being implemented through the uh, Inflate Inflation Act is what I call it, and in other areas. And so I think there's a lot more uh, that tells us that silver will go up than down in 2023. Now, you'll notice I didn't give you a price. That's coming in another video of where I think the price of silver is going to go. I think there's a stronger case for silver to rise in 2023 than to fall. However, keep in mind, I'm, I'm a realist. Um, and it very well could if the, if the indicators uh, point in, in uh, the opposite direction in, in a num number of different areas, in different ways, we could see silver's price fall, uh, at least for part of the year. In fact, I would say expect it to fall in part for, part for a portion of 2023 from where it is right now in December 2022. But I think overall we're going to see volatility and we're going to see it probably rise on average more than fall in the coming year. And I think we pretty much saw that in 2022. Um, and, and, uh, and so there's, that gives us uh, some indicator that uh, we are heading in the right direction uh, by stacking silver. And by the way, one thing we know for sure, there's more and more new stackers coming into the fray um, and stacking. And so premiums probably will fluctuate but will probably remain higher than what we had seen pre-pandemic and certainly higher than we saw in the middle of that um, a year as well too. The era of low premiums or ultra low premiums that we saw before are gone. We must stay used to it and, and, and make that risk assessment whenever we buy silver. Uh, always do your own due diligence from buying silver and paying attention to the markets and paying attention and listening to uh, folks like me prognosticate about where silver could or could not go. This is just uh, an opinion of mine based off of another article that I'm looking at that makes a case 
uh, for it as well too. But uh, there it is. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.